Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're going to be discussing statically indeterminate torque loaded shafts, and we're going to be providing some background information to help us better understand these. So just like statically indeterminate axially loaded members, we can also have a torque loaded shaft that becomes statically indeterminate. So the question becomes, how does a torque loaded shaft become statically indeterminate? What would cause that? Well, it's very similar to the concept that we saw with statically indeterminate indeterminate axially loaded members. So what does that mean? Well, in the case of a torque loaded shaft, if you have a situation where the torque moment equilibrium equation, which of course is sum of the torques equals zero, about the longitudinal axis of the shaft, which we call that the pole of the shaft, if that's not adequate to solve for the unknown torques, which are usually reactions, acting on the shaft, the shaft is statically indeterminate, okay? So when do we see this? What are two common scenarios that we see this? Well, again, similar to statically indeterminate axially loaded members, we have two common scenarios that could cause this. One is you have indeterminacy due to geometric constraints. This is a situation where you have both ends of the shaft are fixed. Okay, so up to this point, we've dealt with torque loaded shafts that are fixed at one end and they're free at the other end. But what happens if both ends are fixed or restrained? So you would have an indeterminacy due to geometric constraints. The other scenario is that you have indeterminacy due to multiple materials acting in composite. So let's say, for example, you have um, maybe like a, a steel tube with a brass core and that brass core and steel tube are fused together and then twisted. Well, those two materials are going to attempt to deform together, right? But in doing so, each of those two materials will carry a different portion of the applied torque, okay? Hence giving two different torque reactions, all right? Um, so in both of these scenarios, we will only have one equilibrium equation that's applicable, and that's the sum of the torques equals zero along the uh, longitudinal axis of the shaft but we're going to have two unknown torque reactions. The additional equation that you need to solve for the second torque reaction or solve for both of the torque reactions as a system, that's what we call the compatibility equation. And we saw this concept before with axially loaded indeterminate systems. So the compatibility equation is going to relate the different angles of twist together. Okay, so let's take a look at each one of these common scenarios a little bit more closely. Okay, let's look at indeterminacy due to geometric constraints. And let's look at this one first. Okay, in this situation, let's say we have this shaft. And let's say that it is fixed at both ends. So this is end A, and let's say that this is end B, okay? And let's say that here you have this torque T, and this is the applied torque, okay? So this is applied, and this is the known torque moment, okay? And so what's gonna happen here? Well, we're gonna have two reactions, right? You're going to have a torque reaction at A. I'm going to call this TA. And then on the other end, you're going to have a torque reaction at B. I'm going to call that T sub B, okay? Now, let's say that this shaft has uh, these the two lengths here that are uh, defining the two segments of this shaft. Let's call this L1 and maybe L2, okay? So what we end up needing is a compatibility relationship that is going to relate the angle of twist at A relative to the angle of twist at B, okay? And so what is that gonna be? Well, if both ends are fixed, then that means the angle of twist of one end with respect to the other should be equal to what? Well, it should just be equal to zero, right? So we're gonna say since 
both ends are fixed, the angle of twist of one end with respect to the other is zero, okay? And so that means that phi at end A relative to end B is zero. Or you could uh, write that, you know, in the other direction, phi B slash A, phi of B relative to A uh, are equal to zero, okay? And so um, what, what do we do then? Well, at this point, we're going to use method of sections to develop a relationship of the angle of twists at each end of the shaft, of the fixed shaft, okay? So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to say by method of sections, I'm going to cut a cut section here. At this, at the, at this part of the shaft. And I'm gonna cut this infinitesimally before I get to T. So this is still gonna be uh, L1, okay? And I've got TA here, okay? So this TA reaction is the same as this TA reaction. And I've made a cut infinitesimally to the left or just before I get to the red applied torque T, all right? Now when I do that, what is going to be the internal torque that shows up at that cut? Well, that's going to be this right here. I'm going to call it T1, and of course, that's just going to be equal to TA, right? Now, what about at the other end, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to make a cut just before that applied torque uh, red T, okay? And I'm going to draw you know, TB here. So this TB reaction torque is the same as this TB. And I've made a cut just to the right of this red torque T. So I'm still able to utilize this entire length right here, L2, all right? And so what is going to be uh, the torque that becomes visible here? Well, this is T2 and it's gonna be equal to TB, all right? Now, you might be thinking, well, wait a second, where's the red applied torque T? Well, it's not showing up here because in each of these free body diagrams, I made a cut on either side of the applied torque T, and I just did not look at the part of the free body that had the red applied torque in it, okay? And so when we look at this compatibility equation, going back to this compatibility equation, what do we what do we see well or how do we piece it together well think of a viewpoint here and you can look inside of either of these cuts okay i can turn turn my eyeball turn my head and look inside of one cut turn my head look at the uh inside of the other cut okay and so what you're going to end up writing is this you're going to say phi a plus phi b equals zero so this this is the compatibility equation expanded. This is this compatibility equation expanded. So when I populate this with what I know of angle of twist, what do I end up getting? Well, I end up with T1 uh, L1 over JG, and then we're gonna have minus T2 L2 over JG equals zero. Now, of course, we know T1 and T2 are TA and TB, okay? So I can rewrite that as, you know, TA L1 over JG minus TB L2 over JG equals zero. Now, uh, how do I know that there's a negative sign here? Where is that coming from? Well, that's coming from us using this viewpoint, right? If I look inside of the cut where T1 is, what do I see? Well, by the right-hand rule, I see a counterclockwise torque, right? So that's gonna give us a positive sign in the first term. Now, if I turn my eyeball and I look inside of the cut where T2 is, 
what does this eyeball see when it looks inside of that cut? It sees a counterclockwise torque moment. Now, by the right-hand rule, counterclockwise is negative. That's where this negative comes from, okay? So what is this equation? Well, this is one of our equations, and this is uh, our compatibility equation, right? So I'll make a little asterisk here. This is the compat equation, okay? So that's one of our key equations. I'll put a little one here, all right? Now, the question is, what, what's the equilibrium equation? Well, the equilibrium equation comes from the original diagram. So let's make a note here, okay? Equilibrium equation comes from the original loaded shaft. So if I scroll back up and I go to the original loaded shaft, what's the equilibrium equation gonna be? Well, it's gonna be sum of the torques equals zero along this longitudinal axis, and then it's gonna have TA, T, and TB all inside of it, okay? And so if I uh, write that out, what do I get? I get sum of the torques equals zero, and I will get negative TA plus T, minus TB equals zero, okay? And so this becomes our equation two. And again, this one is the equilibrium equation, all right? And so what we do is we use each of these, these equations together, right? This becomes a system of two equations. Here's equation one, here's equation two. And so what we do is we solve this system for TA and TB, and those are our torque reactions. Now, from there, we can do all kinds of other things. We can calculate uh, torsional shear stresses. We can um, draw an internal torque diagram if we wanted to, right? At that point, we've got our torque reactions. So that's how we handle a statically indeterminate torque loaded shaft due to geometric constraints. What about having a statically indeterminate shaft due to materials acting in composite? So let's write this down. What if we have materials acting in composite? All right, so in this case, what we could have is we could say consider one material encasing another. All right, so let's say we have a shaft here and I'm gonna orient this one vertically. And let's say that it is a, a hollow shaft, Oop. hollow shaft like this. And let's say that, so it's, so it's a tube, right? It's a tube. Let's say that the shell is made of one material and the core is made of another. And let's say that the core, I'm gonna color it red in here, okay? And so the core has, has one material like this. So here I'm gonna say core is material one, and then I'm gonna say shell is material two, okay? And then let's say that you have a, uh, a torque applied to this thing, T, okay? And it's twisting it. So what's gonna happen is uh, at the connection or, or even in the materials themselves, you're gonna have a reaction torque in the shell I can call that T shell. And then I'm also gonna have a reaction in the core, right? I'm gonna call that T core, all right? In fact, let me make these, uh, orient them the other direction. So it looks like it, it's reacting to it. So, sorry, here's T shell and here is 
T core. Okay, so um, so what is our equilibrium equation? Let's this time let's start with the equilibrium equation. In this case, the equilibrium equation is still going to be sum of the torques equals zero, and so what we're going to have is uh, you know T core plus T shell minus T equals zero. Okay, so that's one of our that's one equation that's the equilibrium equation what about the compatibility equation well you know if this thing has a length okay length l when we write the compatibility equation what's going to show up well it's going to turn out that the angle of twist of the core should be equal to the angle of twist of the shell. How do I know that? Well, if the materials are acting in composite, let's say that they're fused together somehow, that means that they are going to try to deform together. They want to twist together, which means that their angle of twists are the same as one another, okay? Now, what's our definition of angle of twist? Well, again, it's TL over JG, right? So we're gonna say T, core L over J core G core equals T shell times L over J shell G shell, okay? So if you notice uh, what happens here, you have this second equation here. This is your compatibility equation and you use that as a system of equations with your equilibrium equation and what do you solve for we're going to say solve this system for t core and t shell and everything else will would be given to you would be like a constant in that system of equations okay so uh, that summarizes our background information on statically indeterminate torque loaded shafts. If you found this video helpful, please hit like and subscribe. And we're going to have some numerical examples illustrating each of these cases here as well. So be on the lookout for those videos and, um, you know, take notes and hopefully you learn a lot from this and uh, it can help you in your understanding of mech materials. Thanks for watching.